Hey, Foot Clan. Today's show is brought to you by the free Sports Manias app. You've heard us talk about it on the show today, and you have to download it right now. It's on iOS and Android. It is the best fantasy football app that we recommend, and it gives you an edge over your opponents. You can get live news instantly in your pocket, completely free. And listen, this is one of the top eight sports apps by USA Today. So go grab the free Sports Manias app right now. Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. We are back. We're back again. November 5th. Here we are. It's Thursday. We're the Fantasy Footballers. Mm. And we got week nine action coming at you. Mm. Mike, you look ready. I'm ready for Jeremy Hill, my friends. Is he coming? Now is the time. I've been waiting. <laughs> I've been waiting two months. Run to the hills. We're finally gonna finally get some Jeremy Hill action. You think some Thursday night Jeremy Hill action? I do. What are you expecting from the big guy? Uh, I expect huge numbers tonight, which is why <laughs> everyone should start Giovanni Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think you're right. I think Hills he's coming on. Well, the Browns are a pretty good run D though. It's starting to get <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it's starting to get cold outside. Sarcasm. <laughs> Starting to Sarcasm get cold with a dance with a with an arm pump and dance. Yeah, he's got his fantasy football T-shirt on. Today. Well done. Yeah. I yeah. I think that's about out. By the way, I think the the campaign for the fantasy footballer shirt about is about like. Are you just glancing at your? I was glancing to oh, see man, how the, the, the spray tan. <laughs> how ruined spray tan my spray tan still was. There. Uh, <laughs> let me let everybody know the spray tan still heavily ruined. I don't know if you uh, could see that on YouTube. Well, well, but, you don't know how to get a spray tan. No, there are parts of my body that look just like. Just just and look like I went mud bogging by myself naked <laughs> and then and then didn't take a shower. That's just, what I look like. Just so the people out there know, we uh we reached a goal on jointhefoot.com with our community and so one of the the catches, the reward for them, the punishment <laughs> for us was we had to go get spray tan and so we we cataloged that adventure and Jason I mean, he went in with his glasses on on accident. He forgot to put the hairnet on his head. Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. And and that was the best thing because you could kind of hear him in the room. And all you heard was, mistakes were made. (laughs) And his hair was soaking wet. Well, thank you, Foot Clan, for making me do that. Hey, listen, we have a great show for you today. We got our news and notes segment. Get you caught up on all the latest uh, happenings in the fantasy football world. We have our fantasy forecast. We're talking the first half of the games for this weekend. And we got our starts of the week which is my favorite segment of the week. And uh, I was, you know, I was three for four last week. Three home runs, one Matthew Stafford. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we'll see how we do this week. I'm really excited about mine. I looked at your guys' briefly, and uh, I liked them. So if you want to check us out on the web, you can do so at thefantasyfootballers.com. Check us out on Twitter, at the FF Ballers. And listen, I got some breaking news. Oh, hold, yeah. on, oh, hold on, hold oh, on. Breaking news. We've waited a long time for this. Yes. The, the Wheel of Water app is now on the App Store. Yeah, the iOS App Store. It is on the iOS App Store. Go get it right now. Absolutely. It, it will is be- free. It's free, and it, it you know you hear us on the show every week. We make bets when you know, you know, know someone takes Amir Abdullah the rest of the season, I take Joy Bell. We make a bet. Mm. And the way we pay those bets out is we spin the Wheel of Water. Yes. So, and, and now you can spin it too. And please... Uh, we have we're we're starting up the hashtag hashtag wheel of water. Yeah, record these things, people. We want to see them. We will retweet them out so yep. everyone, all of the Foot Clan, can enjoy you embarrassing your friends with soggy bottoms. You can just go to <laughs> wheelofwater.com. Right? Oh yeah, you can just go. Yeah, you can go on the app store and search for, it, or you can just go to wheelofwater.com and it'll auto forward you right to the download. It's free. Yeah, it's fun. We've been waiting for it to come out for a long time. How many different ways? Can you water somebody on that app? I like, think there's 20 plus, I yeah, believe. Yeah, so it, it's fun. The uh, We got our voiceover guy who reads them all out. We got pictures. How Annie to, Oakley. Instructions on how to water one another. So uh, it'll be it'll be awesome. Check it out, wheelofwater.com. We're excited. All right, quick question of the day, guys. Listen to these numbers. These are the numbers, uh, fantasy numbers, of opposing quarterbacks when they play Denver. Okay? Quarterbacks when they play Denver, 2.5. 7, 14, 20, 15, 18, 7. Who got the 20? Uh, I, it's Tre- Teddy Bridgewater. 
<laughs> and, th- and that's of, in of course it was. of course it was <laughs> and and that's in six point per touchdown leagues right that, so that yes that is correct that's oh, even higher so that's even higher scoring for quarterback so the the real question is this can you start any quarterback against the Broncos starting with this week and no. luck but moving forward to uh there is only one quarterback that I believe you can play against him and that is Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. How much of the, that name was right? 100%. He, he Googled. Oh, you looked it up? <laughs> Look at it. Tom, there you go. That's, so, that's why he Patrick. goes by Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Edward Brady. That's just a different feel. Um, okay, so that game's coming up. Isn't that the 29th of November? It's a couple weeks. A couple weeks away. So you start Brady. But Andrew Luck. Do you run to the hills for the? <laughs> if you have any other yeah, quarterback uh, facing I got, I got a tweet today, and they said, do I start Johnny Manziel or Andrew Luck? And I said, congratulations, you found the one quarterback <laughs> that I would not start ahead of Andrew so Luck this t- week. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's fair. I did see Andrew Luck is completely healthy, according to all reports. Yeah, that's great. Which means he's just stinking. <laughs> <laughs> no excuses. So, okay, I, I just thought those numbers were kind of wild because, I mean, yeah, a couple of those are like Flacco in week one. But, but to, I mean, that 6.8, that was Aaron Rodgers. But to answer, uh, there are like – I'm playing. Uh, I'm playing Jay Cutler. I'm playing Tyrod Taylor, Matt Ryan, Derek Carr. All these guys I'm playing over Andrew Luck this week. Yeah, I I don't blame you at all. So let's go ahead and get into the news and notes. News and notes from around the league. All right, I want to start with Keenan Allen because we didn't have a chance to kind of talk through uh, that injury on the show yet. Uh, Because it kind of broke after we had done some recording. So, Keenan Allen's gone. I mean, just, he came quick. I think he was on pace for 134 catches, almost 1,500 yards. He's setting the league on fire and ended his season on a great catch in the end zone. It also escalated very quickly where the the news was, it broke. He's Uh going to miss a week. Keenan Allen might might have a kidney injury. Right. Then five minutes later, Keenan Allen on season-ending IR. Yeah. Uh, it really sucks for, for of course, Keenan Allen. And I think Phillip Rivers does take a, a slight hit. We had, we did talk on uh, on the Tuesday show about the waiver wire. Who are you picking up to replace him, luckily? And it was Stevie Johnson then. It is Stevie Johnson now. I think Stevie gets a huge bump because I believe that he slides into that Keenan Allen possession role, which is a big role right now for San Diego because they cannot run the ball. How well, yeah, that's true. That's true. I was surprised 18 carries from Melvin Gordon last week, uh, only 54 yards out of it. But Antonio Gates has to benefit from this, doesn't he? Of course, doesn't he have to climb way up your list in terms of like rest of season tight ends? Uh, you know, we already know the schedule's pretty good for Phillip Rivers. I think he was already high yeah. enough where I'm not sure that he yeah, but climbs I'd, over I'd, anybody that he was already behind. Well, we talked on the show, you guys, uh, we said Barnage, we'd take Barnage rest of the season over Gates. I don't think I would do that anymore. Well, I believe you said that. And here's uh, here's the problem. Mike and I did. Yeah, yeah oh. but here's what, uh, for the Barnage factor, something that we need to consider now. Uh, Johnny Football, it's clearly, he's playing tonight. And do the Browns... <laughs> yeah. Get your Bengals defense in the lineup, people. Uh, do the Browns Move because the season is is now lost for the Browns, especially with the loss tonight. I think that cements that their their uh, their season is lost. Do the Browns go back to Josh McCown to just salvage a couple wins, or do they try and see what they have in Johnny Football? That do they need to take a quarterback next year in the draft? I think it's going to depend on Johnny Manziel's play. The, the decision will be made for them in a sense, right? If he comes out and stinks, they're not going to say. He's our starter going forward. We got to see and lose. I, I just don't think that'll happen. If he comes out and plays well, then they then they'll have the opportunity to publicly make that decision. So it, it's really going to come down to that. And honestly, is he going to play well on a Thursday night game I against don't know. the Bengals? My my well, point more was that Gary Barnage was was invisible when Johnny Football was on the field. Gary garbage now, those first two. Now weeks. he's it's a tough read. He's yeah. really he's emerged. Gary has being emerged. worked into the offense more too. So it but quarterbacks play very differently yeah. some some target the tight end some do not so there could be some Gary Barnes concern if Johnny football ends up being the starter I completely agree so uh let's go ahead and talk about Ryan Fitzpatrick uh, I said my stream of the week was the Jets quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick's gonna give it a go yep uh he he was seen 
practicing throwing the ball. They said he's going to play. Uh, he's got that torn ligament, but he's going to start. So are we much more confident with our Jets? Yeah. Yeah. Even uh, a one-handed Ryan Fitzpatrick I'll trust over Geno a, Smith. A two-handed Geno Smith. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. So n- some guys that missed practice. Let's talk about them. Uh, Willie Sneed missed practice. T.Y. Hilton. Brandon Marshall. Uh, what's the story there? Well, the the T.Y. Hilton one, I think, is the most concerning one where he had an MRI on his foot. Uh, we're, we're not exactly sure how severe the injury is yet, but it is an absolute situation that needs to be monitored. Uh, you might get the benefit of monitoring it this week because you probably weren't going to play him against Denver. If you had a better option, I'd be playing anybody. Yeah. This is a blessing in disguise. It was kind of like how last week I was, uh, you know, I was, uh, now, I very will- much not playing Hilton because of, uh, Norman. And I, I would do the same again this week because of the Broncos. Okay. So what about, uh, Marshall? We don't really know what's going on. All I've heard is sore toe, sore ankle, but he's sitting out. So we still have to watch this. Does anybody benefit in a big way? I mean, Decker, uh, if Marshall is yeah. out. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Just, just Decker. Decker. Okay. Yeah. Um, What's the last guy I mentioned there? The need for Sneed. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that one's a little bit disconcerting because nobody knew he was injured. There was no play where it seemed like he came up injured, but then he completely missed practice um, on a not on a sit and get extra rest type of thing for you know a rookie. So that's just one to monitor um, as as the week goes on yeah. and see if he plays the practices Thursday Friday. He did play eighty seven percent of the snaps, so maybe they were just giving him a, a rest day. But it, like Jason said, we didn't, we're not sure yet. All right, we didn't talk Pep Pep Hamilton's firing, gone offensive coordinator of Indianapolis. Uh, he was a longtime coordinator of Andrew Luck all the way back to Stanford. He took the fall. I don't know if he should have taken the fall uh, for that kind of play, but he took the fall. So now uh, Rob Chudzinski, Chudzinski <laughs> comes into uh, – you remember he he was a head coach for the Browns. Yeah. So uh, do you expect – I mean, is there any projections fantasy-wise for this offense? I expect everything to be exactly the same. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and terrible this week. I, I think Frank Gore is the only guy you could play. Okay. Sounds good. And uh, what else do we got here? We got Antonio Andrews being announced as the workhorse. By a new coach. Mike Malarkey. Yeah. So is this a bunch of <laughs> malarkey? Well, here's the here's the deal. It's really, really working out for them to have Antonio Andrews as the workhorse. So they'll keep keep winning. <laughs> <laughs> keep winning games. Uh, you he's have, looked the best of everybody. Yes, and you have to expect it's true and ensure he's worth a flyer if you haven't already scooped him up. But uh, you can't expect huge things. All right, it's Goldilocks time in San Francisco. Blaine Gabbert gets a start over Colin Kaepernick. Uh, I saw a funny graphic yesterday, although it, it was a little misleading. Yes, of but, course. But uh, it was basically comparing Cam Newton, the MVP candidate statistics, with Colin Kaepernick, the now benched, maligned, uh, loser quarterback, you know, in everybody's mind. The only real difference, I mean, there was a difference in touchdown, 11 to 6. But every other number, Kaepernick was the same or better at pretty much. So, uh, you know, he probably needed to sit. That team's awful. The running backs are awful. That team's on its way to a number one pick maybe. Do you start anybody against, I mean, any defense against the 49ers right now? Yeah, all of them. Juicy. All of them. I don't. I don't know if people remember this because we love to be uh, so stuck in the now. The official streaming defense uh, strategy in in years past was stream a defense against Blaine Gabbert. Oh yeah, <laughs> that, yeah that was a solid that strategy. Was, that was the go to strategy, and yeah. you would like Andy and I would have competitions. We would see a defense five weeks in advance. You're like. I got to grab them now because I know that someone else is going to do it and they're going to give me 20 points. You got to gab that defense. So, <laughs> yeah. Gab it. So, yeah, you, yeah F- uh, Falcons, strong play this week. Very strong play. So, uh, one other bit of news you might want to know, just Bruce Arians out here in Arizona said that Michael Floyd is essentially going to take back that starting job over John Brown. And he just kind of, the way Arians talks, I mean, the Cardinals play in three wide receiver sets almost all the time. So, it's really somewhat un- inconsequential. But Floyd has been playing very well, and he is uh, he's certainly going to be a trade value to you compared to John Brown. Yeah, and, and Brown really took the job because Michael Floyd was busted up. Um, so I'd, I'm not too concerned about it. I think they're all going to – all the Cardinals are feasting right now. So Oh, and, and I did forget, superstar Joseph Randall has been, re- <laughs> been released. The burglar. 
Well, so. Mike was down on Joseph Randall all year, said he couldn't do it, and then he gets in trouble with the NFL, and he no longer can do it. Yeah, um, so we got some we're of that. Back, right. We're back on the Kristen Michael watch. No, Michael. no, no, no. Yeah, you actually dropped Kristen Michael I, this week in our League of Records. I had to because it's he's had too many chances. And he had the opportunity to take the job. Darren McFadden uh, is a strong fantasy option right now somehow. It's it's 2015, yeah. and, and I'm saying that. Uh, but so, and Michael, is he's just one of those uh, really high upside handcuff type guys at this point. All right, we're going to get into the fantasy forecast and talk matchups for week number nine. But before we do that, I want to thank our sponsor again, the Sports Manias app. You know, right next to my phone, right next to the Water Wheel app, I have the Sports Manias app because it is the tops. It is the tops when it comes to apps on your phone. Knowledge is power in fantasy football, and we love Sports Manias because you can get all of the articles tweets, videos, news about your team without all the noise. They have a very well curated feed in the Sports Manias app. That's one of the reasons why they're a top eight sports app in USA Today, a top five app in MacLife, and Fansided said they're the top app to follow for the NFL. And we love Sports Manias. We've been using that app for a long time. You get notifications in that app on player news or when your players score, information directly connected to your team and it gives you an edge so we love that app and you can import your team from cbs espn yahoo so go grab it today the game changer for the fantasy football player the most complete app that we've seen uh on the market is the is, is the sports manias app so grab it on the google play store grab it on the ios store and get it today speaking of tops we'd like to thank our other sponsor of the day tops <laughs> That's no that, joke. I mean, nice connection. And they're bringing together, they're they're bringing you the Tops Huddle app. Again, in another app that we've talked about because we love so much. Huddle. Uh, Huddle features officially licensed NFL digital cards. You get to collect cards just like when you were a child and you opened up the that pack and you got the Babe Ruth rookie card. You guys remember when you got Babe Ruth? <laughs> yeah, back 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 when <laughs> yeah, I was see? back when I was a kid, see? Well, we didn't get Babe Ruth, but we had plenty of Ken Griffey and other superstars <laughs> back Griffey. in the day. So this is and you get to watch your collection grow, opening packs, making trades, and the app isn't only about card collecting. You can play your cards and earn points in a real-time daily fantasy style game based on how players perform on game day, so you get that sweet fantasy football action as well. Over 300 million Tops digital packs have been opened since 2012 with fans ripping over a pack a second. That is a breakneck speed. That is a Willie Sneed speed. Ba-boom. For football and especially fantasy football fans, this app is a must-have. Download it for free in the App Store or Google Play and get 10 free packs today. The Tops Huddle app. Collect cards, play cards. It's fun. It's a great time. All right, let's go ahead and get into the fantasy forecast. Fantasy forecast. Man, I am, I am strangely. Uh, maybe I ate something wrong, you know, this morning, last night. I'm strangely tempted to make this game. Whoa! Because you're remembering last year. I just it's Thursday night. It's a division game. You just. You just don't know. I, I'm tempted to make it my almost upset of the week is what I was going to say. You remember last year, right? Manziel, Browns, is that what you're talking about? I'm talking about Andy Dalton putting on the uh, the worst offensive performance you've ever seen in your on life. On a Thursday night? No, of oh. all time. You don't remember when his quarterback rating was like two? It was against the Browns? Yeah. I, I don't know. He didn't look good last week. It was pick city. AJ Green was just was I mean, kind the of Bengals are favored by 11. Yeah, I I think you're a uh, a crazy person if you go with this one. I usually can support you, but you're you're all on your your own. All if right, you do I'm this gonna one. save it. I'm gonna save it. All right, so we've got the matchup, Manziel Dalton. Uh, you you said you would not stream Manziel even you know over a bad matchup matchup for luck. Is there any chance you play Manziel in any context? Uh, is four quarterback leagues? Maybe. Yeah. So if I'm in a two QB league and I am just desperate, but uh, I think the Bengals are going to eat Manziel's lunch tonight. Sweet. Yeah. Manziel had a disastrous outing against him last time. Picked off twice. I think he had a total of 80 yards through the air. Not a good performance. So, and the and I and the Bengals are it's, better this time. And it's around. it's short week. It's just it's a bad situation. Yeah, to prepare and to get ready to play a uh, 
uh, undefeated Bengals team. I mean, you're basically you're counting on uh, that Travis Benjamin bomb again. Is if you play Manziel, that's what you're counting on. That's true. So we talked a little bit about it earlier. Jeremy Hill, he seems to be coming on a little bit. I'm not worried about Bernard. I, I think that's the question in fantasy owners' minds. Are are you worried about Bernard? Bernard's a weapon. You know, they they barely got by Pittsburgh. They didn't use him enough. He's been super efficient this year. Are you rest of season still? Are you on Hill? Uh, as of now, uh, I, I I like them both, but I think I think uh, moving forward, as the weather is changing, as the team is getting into playoff mode, uh, I think they, they, I I think they know they have to lean more on the running game, and because you do you do not want to end up in the playoffs uh, with the this offensive philosophy that they have of just throwing the ball all over the field because Andy Dalton. I don't know if I want to rely on Andy Dalton mentally with all these uh, flashbacks of him failing in the playoffs without having a running game. Jason, uh, the Browns are the worst run-graded uh, team on Pro Football Focus. So they're the worst against the run. Do you start Hill and Bernard with no problems? No, I, I don't. I, I'm not confident personally in starting Bernard because I think the, the porous run D is what's going to keep the ball on the ground. And I think that's going to be Hill on the field and using more. I'm a little bit more worried about Bernard. Um, now, now is Bernard startable here? Absolutely. He's, he's, he's capable of putting up a good game. This is a bad defense. What I'm saying here is I, I, I agree with Mike that I expect the ball to be going to Hill. As we kind of saw last week coming out of their bye, that was the direction they started to move. And it worries me a little bit because Gio's been fantastic. Man, when you watch him with the ball in his hands, he's great. But he has to have the ball in his hands, and that's what it comes down to for all players. And I just worry about how much they're going to get him involved, especially in a game like this. But he could anybody in this game for the Bengals could put up a, a great fantasy output against the Browns. Yeah, it, as much as I like Hill, I'm I'm not concerned about starting an A.J. Green, a Marvin Jones as a, a wide receiver 2-3 type guy. Eifert, of course, is still in your lineup. I'm, Let me I, give you some I, Eifert questions. Okay. Eifert or Gates? Oh, man. Uh, hey, I I need <laughs> – the, the unfortunate thing is you have to make this right now, and Gates is still banged up a little bit. Uh, uh, I think he's still practicing. So I think he's play practicing. Eifert? If you want to be safe, but – What I if think, you got both the guys in this game? Eifert and, oh. Bar Eifert and Barnish. Uh, I would go with Eifert. Yeah, just, that's just not being, close to me. Being afraid of, of uh, Jason, what what would you say to the Eifert Gates? Eifert Gates, I've got Eifert one spot ahead of Gates, and I agree it's it's basically based on the injury, not knowing how healthy Gates is. Okay. Did you it, know Travis? Big part of his you game. know Travis Benjamin is the only wide receiver with zero drops this year. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's <laughs> well, I was looking that up yesterday, and pl we played the game. Who has the you know the highest catch percentage? With a certain amount of targets, yeah, certain, certain names come up, right? It's yeah, you think oh Larry, Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, oh he's one drop. I think it's, I heard no, it's Travis Benjamin. I think I heard Johnny Manziel though say he was going to do something about that to, <laughs> tonight. <laughs> like I'll he, fix that. He's put his mind to it. Yeah, <laughs> which is it's great. So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, slide over to the Dolphins at the Bills. Tyrod Taylor, uh, back. Oh, back again. Yes. So. What are we expecting out of this game? Because the Bills are favored at home. Uh, Miami put up a stinker against, you know, after a couple great games, they put up a stinker against New England. Do you start both quarterbacks? Uh, yeah, I, I prefer Taylor. But Tannehill, is, he's a fine uh, lower-end quarterback one started for me this week. Okay. And, uh, all right, let's – what about Taylor? Damn, I mean – What about Taylor? He's I, I love him. Okay. Yeah, oh, I've got yeah. Him top ten this week. Yeah, I, I love Taylor. He's he's back. He's finally healthy. He has been uh, lighting up the league. Really, if if you're not paying attention, you think, oh, he's just a runner. He's a great passer. He's completing over seventy percent of his passes, and these aren't just dink dunk uh, type throws. He ranks near the top of the league with yards per attempt. So I I like Taylor. Uh, the Dolphins kind of. I think they got really exposed. They kind of came down off of their new coach. Uh, new coaching regime high. The Patriots manhandled them. And last time the Dolphins played the Bills, it was really ugly. Uh, for the, It was lopsided for the Bills. And that, that was the game that Tannehill just managed to come through with some excellent garbage time production. 
The only thing that concerns me about Taylor moving forward is just that he has the weapons he needs to be productive. It'll help having Shady back. Watkins is practicing on a limited basis this week for those monitoring his situation. I think he plays this week. I do too. Um, Harvin's obviously out, but that's the only thing that I want to watch. Any uh, okay? So let's talk. Let's talk the running back situation. You're starting Shady. You're starting Lamar Miller. Um, is Carlos Williams a pure handcuff? Yeah, yeah, he is to me. I mean, he was putting up huge production when he was playing, but that's because he was scoring. He was only touching the ball around seven or ten times, but he happened to score every single time. Yeah, it was almost like David Johnson he, putting up good numbers, but you can't rely on him t- to. That's that's a perfect comparison. You know, you you, you can't start him even though you he could might get have that pl- he might get that play or two, but you can't predict it. Right, exactly. Okay, so. Jarvis Landry's been one of the most consistent wide receivers in all of fantasy. He's kind of slid into that uh, Wes Welkerish consistency model that we saw from years past. Let me ask you, though. I mean, do you do you think of him? I mean, he's right. I think ranked right on the one two line. I think he's like thirteen on the season. Do you consider him uh, a one capable receiver? I uh, I don't. I mean, a capable. I guess you know. Uh, optimistically he has the potential and the talent to do it but I consider him a high-end wide receiver too he's to me more of the consistent guy with a high floor and and not as high a ceiling that's what I see Jarvis Landry as because while he did get two touchdowns uh I believe in his last game that's very rare for him so far over his short career two games 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 ago ago. two two games ago you know he's normally the possession guy not the red zone guy let me ask you this mike would you rather have stefan diggs or jarvis landry rest of the season oh man great question uh that is a great question i would go man i think you got to stay in the finals with stefan diggs at this point i think his uh, his upside is higher even Uh, though it, it and uh uh, Jarvis Landry though is getting a lot decent targets over the year. He has been getting solid red zone targets. Just wasn't scoring touchdowns. Would you rather have Mike Evans or Jarvis Landry rest of the season? Landry. Okay. All I right. want the con- Evans can boom give you fifty. He can. He's a receiver who can give you that forty point game of just absolute ridiculousness. But I want the consistency from Landry. Are you guys starting Charles Clay? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. He, I think he's a solid. The, the Packers head into Carolina and our favorites. Over the Panthers. That's crazy. By two, I, two and a half points, which is, is shocking to me. I don't think it's, it's that crazy. I, I I would say that the Packers win this game. The Panthers are undefeated and they're at home. I'm just amazed that they're they're not this game isn't at least heads up, you know, like Yeah, that's it's just the the, the points that Green Bay is getting. Yeah, I mean I, I honestly think that Carolina wins this game. So I mean I'm not making that my almost upset oh. because that that's too it's too close to call for me. Right, you just, don't even think that's an upset, right? You think that's what it should right what, right. What the line so I'm not be. I, and I've got I got mine figured out for that. So, um, so let's talk about this game a little bit. Rogers, a uh, couple tough matchups in a row. Yep. Um, a wide receiving core that honestly on on film to me outside of Randall Cobb isn't doing a lot to help him out. Not a lot of separation. I mean, Rodgers buys a lot of time in the pocket. They can, last game, he first read, second read, he couldn't find anybody. They really need Ty Montgomery to get healthy because he is a weapon that seems to be missing. When when he's not healthy and in there, then if you shut down Randall Cobb with your best, James Jones, look, there was a reason he was dropped from other teams. He's slower and older. He's, he's, he's dropped a, off a map. A yeah, little, dropped yeah off a so I, you know, I, I expect Ty Montgomery to be – uh, a change of pace for the Packers offense if just, he's playing that's going to be important for the other wide receivers to be able to get involved. We should just get Jordy Nelson back too. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> get him back. I think he's practicing right No, <laughs> It's such a sad thing. Because uh, there's these super, superstars in fantasy, you don't even need to talk about them the whole year because of the injuries. So, uh, do you, Are you confident starting Randall Cobb in, in – I guess so. You're saying you you don't want to play anybody else, but would you play Cobb this week? Yeah, no way. I would. I would not. I don't. I don't know if Cobb is going to get the Josh Norman experience. He won't. That's that is the big difference to me is whether or not he's on Norman. I expect him to be Normand because when I look at the wide receivers there, even though he's more of the slot guy, he's not normally the type of wide receiver that that Norman's guarding. I mean, what are you going to? I so you think Norman's going to be on James Jones? I think Cobb will be okay. 
I think he'll be fine. No, I'm saying who do you think Josh Norman? I think Norman be? will do what he did last game, which is you know occasionally Norman was on Moncrief last game. It wasn't all Hilton. It's true. So I think he'll move around a little bit. Um, my, uh, Norman's great. We don't got hopefully uh, a downpouring rain, and and Aaron Rodgers is as good as it gets. He'll find he'll find his guy, and and he's got you know Cobb can get separation. So I'm okay with Cobb. I mean I'm talking wide receiver two. Right. I'm fine with him as a two yeah. this week. All right, the Eddie Lacy James Starks situation. How are you guys reading that? It Lacey. seems like it's just Lacy. Lacy, yeah. uh, and I, after the bye, I think that the the running game struggles. Uh, it's it, it's this vicious cycle of of who's responsible uh, for the, the the downturn of the Green Bay offense, where they can't run the ball, and the passing hasn't been the normal Aaron Rodgers numbers that we we've been used to the the last couple games. Is that because they can't run? Or can they not run because the passing game isn't there? Eddie Lacy or Jeremy Langford this week? Uh, Jason? Langford. Uh, that's tough. I, I, uh, I think it's Langford. Let me check my rankings. It is on your rankings. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You know, in, in my rankings. It is on yours too. It, it is? I've got Langford higher? Definitely. All right. Well, then I'll stick with that. I shouldn't say definitely. It's like five spots. <laughs> but you do. You I do, do have think I do think Eddie Lacy is a is a decent play this week. I've I've got him about six spots higher than. Do you, you take two. him over Ronnie Hillman? Yes. yes. Do you take him over Jonathan Stewart? In this game, head to head, Stewart's got three straight games, ah, twenty plus touches. That, I would. I'd go. With, I, th- I think if I'd you go want with higher, Stewart. if you want higher upside to me, I go. Yes. I go yeah. Lacey. The ceiling is Lacy because Stewart is never guaranteed a touchdown when you're when you're by the end so i guess Lacey's not either but if any running back is going to get it in it's high high probability that it's Lacey. all right all right that makes sense that's good good thoughts uh we're starting greg olson yep so no no nothing to talk about there is there a wide receiver you'd start from carolina and i guess I would, it'd, be, it'd begin right i would start ted ginn yeah as a flex uh yeah lower three lower three. Or, or i mean uh, deeper league, higher, like deeper a higher league. three yeah deeper league all right, Jaguars go into New York. They face the Jets. We talked about Ryan Fitzpatrick. He'll be back. Ivory's practicing in full this week. You can start him with no hesitation whatsoever against the Jacksonville defense that is, uh, <laughs> you know, they're in the middle of the pack against the run, but they're not, you know, not very good. So uh, Allen Robinson this week, concerns. Yes. Uh, I was looking at Allen Robinson's uh, splits, him in a game versus – Bottom half passing defense and top half passing defense. And his his fantasy production literally is cut in half. And I think that is more a Blake Bortles issue than an Allen Robinson issue. But Darrell Revis is one of the best in the league. He's I he's gonna be on Allen Robinson. He, not gonna, he's absolutely going to shadow Allen Robinson. Uh so it I think it could be a tougher day. Not Revis isn't it's not impossible to beat him. Allen Robinson has the the ability to do it every once in a while it's can Blake Bortles find him on that particular play uh I, this is one of those games where I kind of like Alan Hearns yep that's uh, what... because the second receiver is going to have to be just he's just going to get an uptick of targets because Robinson won't be open every single play and Antonio Cromartie has struggled recently uh this year as that second cornerback there so if he's on Hearns I think Hearns could get open did you know Hearns has it's either five or six games in a row with a touchdown. Yes. I mean, he's just – he is a great weapon there to to score. And if you can't do it with Allen Robinson because of Revis and you, you're you playing from behind and need to pass, that's that's a way forward. All right. What and are, uh, do you start Julius Thomas? I was just going to ask, what do we do with Thomas? I uh, start him. Yeah? Yeah, I do. With full confidence? Yeah. Yeah, as a top 12 tight end, I do. Yeah, I think I think Julius Thomas is talented. I think the Revis factor will impact t- targets his way in this game. And uh, you know, I'm not I'm not super high on Yeldon this week. Uh, he'll get the workload, but that's not going to amount to too much if, if they're trailing in this game. Uh, the run defense, the Jets are number one in the league against the run. So I Yeldon, you have to take down a few ticks on the road against the number one run defense. Do we I, agree? I, with that? I completely agree. I mean, the, the what's nice about him is the volume will be there. So there's there's a baseline you get from Yeldon. All right. So let's move on to the Rams at the Vikings. The Vikings are favored in this game, and this is my... Andy's Almost Upset of the Week. I can get behind this. Yeah. I think the Rams 
are probably about as good as the Vikings are. The Vikings are five and two. The record um, is much better than the um, well, not much better. The Rams are four and three right now, right? Is that uh, right? Yeah, I think that's right. So I mean, I think that this is a game that St. Louis can control. Their defense has uh, been playing out of its mind. I know it's in Minnesota, but they gave up. I mean, the Rams are coming off two straight games, giving up only six points. It's not like the Vikings' offense is prolific here. You know, it's it's dear, down near the bottom of the league. And when I was looking at these two teams, I kind of saw mirror images of one another. Seriously. I mean, you got Gurley and Peterson. You know, Foles is, is terrible. I was going to um, say, please. Bridge, Bridgewater's better than Foles. <laughs> please do not compare Nick Foles to Teddy Bridgewater. No, but the defense for St. Louis is a little bit better than the, the Vikings. D. I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. Vegas thinks the same thing. It's under 40 points for Whoa. the over-under. And, um, you know, I I think you have to play Diggs right now and stay in the flames with him because it's just going to take one play, and he's kind of the top target right now. So I, I'm starting Diggs. I'm not hyper-confident because 40, the Rams' D is great. Over 40% of the targets last week. Yeah, wow. that's why you pl- That's how you play a guy. Look look to those for, <laughs> to get your baselines. So um, I'm not – other than the running backs and Diggs – I'm probably putting most of the other guys on the bench. I mean, Austin in the flex, maybe. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. I would, yeah, I'm with you, man. Running backs and digs, and that's and then I'm washing my hands of this game. Yeah. So Redskins face the Patriots. The Patriots are 14 point <laughs> favorites. I will oh. take. I will take the. I will take that. Yeah. You'll take the. Uh, it should be more. Yes. <laughs> yes, they will win by more than 14 points. All right. Yeah. I mean, I. I think you're right. It's in Foxborough. I just don't know if anybody can stop this team right now. And, uh, so, and if anybody can, I don't think it's going to be a, a team with a run defense that's at the bottom of the league. It's been playing pretty bad the past three games. Th- this is a game, I think, matchup-wise, where you can play uh, just about every single I- – I wouldn't play Amendola. But I'm gonna, I would... I'll, I'll read them out. You say yes or no. Okay, yes. All right, so Bra- <laughs> Brady. Yes. Lewis. Yeah, yes. Blunt. Yes. Edelman. Yes. LaFell. Yes. yes. Chandler? No. Okay, you got uh, Amendola? No. no. No way. Yeah. All right. So most Gronk? Patriots. Gronk, yeah. Yeah, so pretty much all of them. So let's talk about the Redskins. That's really the, the question here of who do you who do you choose to play? Is Deshaun Jackson? I think you can start Deshaun Jackson, personally. Uh I I agree with you. I like the 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 garbage potential of this game for Washington. Uh, I think Cousins is not an awful streamer. Uh, I don't know. Do my rankings say I would play Cousins over Andrew Luck? Because in my heart, I believe that I would. Uh, I so in DJX, I think he can just he can get a bomb. You have in. Cousins fourteenth, and you have Andrew Luck sixteenth. Yeah, your, your heart speaks true. I knew it. I knew I could trust my heart. Uh, and I I think Cousins can be okay. In this game, just getting behind so, so uh, by so many points. Uh, Jordan Reed, rule 86 of fantasy football. If Jordan Reed's healthy, you play him. Yep. So uh, is that his? Is that his number? His jersey number? I don't know. I just, awesome. I just, I just grabbed a random <laughs> number uh, out of thin air. Yeah. <laughs> his like, number is 86. Are you kidding me? No, I thought it sounded familiar when you said it. His number is 86. That's some. That's some weird. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's how much we're watching football. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Blowing well, my mind. There you, there you go. So so do you play Garcon then and hope for garbage time? Uh, He's a lower end, yeah. I would pr- I think I'd rather play Deshaun Jackson. And what about the running game? Do you steer clear of what everyone? Chris Thompson would be my start over Jones or Morris. I yeah. agree. And he's I would practicing not. He's practicing in full and he's fine. And I would not want to put Chris Thompson in there. So for me, I, I, I agree with you. He is yeah, better but what than if you, the other what two. What if you were the Love Bell, Matt Forte, Arian Foster owner? Then I went <laughs> and I got I got Langford. I hope. Yeah, if, if yeah. it didn't work out. Thompson, if you're if you're one of those, if you got hit by the apocalypse, if you're getting hit by right, week, right. the week nine by apocalypse, then sure, Chris Thompson. I like the email from somebody who said that uh, he withstood so many victories that his team broke. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the break was like Foster Bell down, boom, boom. So... Or Charles, you know, you got Charles, you're in trouble too. Everybody's hurt. So let's go ahead and get, uh, we're going to do the rest of the games tomorrow. So let's go ahead and move into our starts of the week. Starts of the week. 
All right, I'm going to let Mike kick it off at the quarterback position. Sing it to me. Uh, so this week I'm going off the heels of a monster game, and I'm staying in the flames with Eli Manning against Tampa Bay. The matchup is too delicious, and there's there's really not a whole lot I nutritious. need Nutritious. Yeah, it is nutritious for your fantasy football team. There's not a lot I need to say about this other than the matchup is great. I like Eli Manning. Uh, the, the running game is uh, – it's the the running game for the New yeah, York Giants. Uh, and, oh, and ODB is really coming on. I just – the I want to stick with that passing attack. So How I'm many Giants Eli. running backs does it take to screw in a light bulb? <laughs> is that the – the answer four. Is, it's four. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jason, who's your quarterback start of the week? Send in the car. Send in the car. Send in the car. <laughs> so he is also my stream of the week, but I'm going to be staying in the flames and staying with the automobile that is Derek Carr. He just put up 30 automobile. and 39 fantasy points in a row against two great pass defenses in San Diego and the Jets. At least San Diego was a great pass defense I would before not they ran that into in either of those. Yeah. Uh, Derek Carr. So in here, he's got a uh, you know he's going to Pittsburgh. I think that again, as Pittsburgh gets better and Big Ben gets a little bit more acclimated and the points go higher, it's just going to be better for quarterbacks. So sticking with the car. All right, I'm jumping back in with Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. Uh, you know he games six point leagues 21, 33, 33, 20, 26, and he's back. He's at home. He's against Miami. Uh, I think Watkins will be back. I expect him to be able to give you a very consistent game. You can throw him back in there if you need him. So uh, Let's go ahead and go to the running back position. Mike, who do you have? I got my man. We started the show with him, and we will end the show with him. Jeremy Hill, The, uh, the he's finally playing on more than 50% of the snaps. Hugh Jackson quoted, the arrow is pointing up for Jeremy Hill. And the Browns are the very bottom in the league of run defense, so I'm going with Jeremy Hill tonight. All right, Jason, who do you got? I'm going to take a risk here and go with DeMarco Murray. Sarcasm. Well, no, no, no. Here's <laughs> why. That has to be sarcasm because <laughs> no. I almost didn't even let you choose this one. <laughs> okay, let me let me remind you. DeMarco take Murray against – No, no, no. DeMarco Adrian Murray. Adrian Peterson. Listen to me. <laughs> There are a lot of people that are afraid of playing DeMarco Murray because last time he played Dallas. Yeah, Dallas is who afraid had of his number. Murray. He's he my four this third, week. He's I know. Mike, he's, he's Mike's four. He's your seven. I think he's a great option. He had 13 carries for two yards against Dallas last we time. All ag- okay, yeah, we all agree with you. So there you go. <laughs> I think he's a good player. So if you're out there and you're the contemplating, tops. you think he's – Got a bad matchup with the Dallas Rundy. Like, they know something because last time they said they did, he was complaining about that. Get over it. They, okay, they had their bye week issue. They fixed the running game. He's been running great, and it's another big opportunity for revenge. So I expect right. a big All game. Right. My running back is Todd Gurley. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Jeremy Langford, guys. I am all aboard the Langford Mobile. Uh, he is – I have plenty of confidence in starting him. He is facing a terrible – Terrible run defense. Um, what is this stat here? Of, of the eight running backs who have attempted 10 or more rushes against San Diego this season, six have finished with 15 and a half points or more. Langford last week was great in the absence of Forte. I think 20 plus touches is a foregone conclusion for Langford in this game. And so I'm I'm all aboard. I, I agree. The, I, the news out of Chicago is they're going to give him the chance to plug in right as the Matt Forte. And that stat was courtesy of our good friend of the show, the late round QB. Yeah. Yeah. So Langford, by the way, um, I, I was putting in bids on him to try to get him in a bunch of leagues, including our league of record where I have Ivory, Lewis, and Stewart. And if I had got him, I was going to have a hard time deciding do I, do I go with, you know, my rankings right. and like bench – Stewart or something. So didn't get him though. So don't have to worry about it. All right. My wide receiver start of the week is Mike Evans. Did you see what the breeze just did? The breeze. The breeze, the breeze. just did to that secondary. <laughs> did you see what? Are the you breeze? kidding me? Winston is improving rapidly, not throwing interceptions. Mike Evans had kind of an enigmatic, uh, weird game last week, but I think Evans is a, uh, is a monster this week. Yeah, that's a good pick. My uh, wide receiver is Brandon Cooks. Julio Jones. Did you see what the <laughs> breeze just did? That's why I'm sticking with Brandon Cooks. He is still, uh, w- w- you know, we got the need the for breeze. speed over here. But Cooks has been better 
then you know he's gotten a lot of flack because he was drafted so high and he has been a disappointment so you've been benching him lately and you've been sad that you've benched him because he's come on strong I think the the running the running game is hurt right now for New Orleans with Kyrie Robinson being down and so that's going to put more balls into the air and right now Cooks is averaging 8.6 uh targets and receptions combined versus Sneed's 6.6. Is that on the season or is that That's on the that's on the season and okay. I looked over the last 3 as well and it was I identical pacing which was really surprising considering the beginning of the year Sneed wasn't involved but on a per game basis it's pretty much stayed the same. So Cooks is still the number 1 there and it should be a good matchup and and the breeze is blowing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh Mike right. you're going to share your wide receiver with us? I'm going with Eric Decker. Uh, the Jets have a delicious matchup against Jacksonville. Uh, I, we got the news that uh, Fitzpatrick is a go, and so I'm still going to stick with the, the wide receiver core of the Jets, and Marshall's a little bit banged up. Either way, if Marshall doesn't play, I think Decker gets more targets, or Marshall plays banged up, and Decker gets some more targets. So I, I, I like him this week. All right, let's go to the tight end position. I, this, is, this is my favorite of all of my starts of the week this week. I am... Feeling great about this. Delaney Walker. I think Delaney Walker is a super, super great pick this week. New Orleans just gave up six touchdowns to Eli Manning. They're 28th in the league against the tight end position. And Kendall Wright is doubtful for this week. Unlikely to play. Not uh, bad. Mariota should be back. I love Delaney Walker this week. I think Not he's bad. a steal. A steal. I have Martellus Bennett uh, in this game. You've got uh, the, the defense that he's facing in San Diego. They have five games where the tight end has caught a touchdown, only three where a tight end hasn't caught a touchdown. You've got Vegas saying that this is the second highest scoring game of the week. And so I think those targets as they're going around will be going to Martellus Bennett. So I see a high floor and a high ceiling. So I like Bennett this week. And the the man that we all raced to the yeah. show doc to put in, and I was first, Heath Miller. Why? Heath Miller is playing the Raiders. You know he had over 100 yards last year? Or, I mean, last week? Yeah, and, Be, and 10 catches. 10 catches. So, and this isn't just a tight end versus the Raiders, although that is a very sound strategy still to go with. Uh, we saw at the beginning of the year when Le'Veon Bell did not play, Heath Miller was far more involved in the offense than he had been after Lev Bell was uh, reinstated. And then Lev Bell went out last week. Heath Miller was very involved. I, I love him this week. I like it too. I like all those tight ends. I think Bennett is a good start, especially because people have been a little disappointed. They want to rotate away from him. I think he will have a big game on Monday night. And so those are our starts of the week. Yep. So before I close the show, I do want to remind everybody because we're so excited about it because we waited so long for it to, to kind of finally hit the app store. Go grab the Wheel of Water app and have some fun with your friends. Make some ridiculous bets this weekend and then tweet them out and use the hashtag Wheel of Water so that we can and get see the, those get the and video laugh, up and laugh a lot. So we can share, see them and retweet them. I had a quick personal story I wanted to share with you guys. I wanted to play a game. Personal. Yeah, well, from this was my night last night. Uh, I wanted, secrets. <laughs> no, this is not. It's <laughs> not a secret. Okay. <laughs> so it's a game of the worst. And where is the worst place? We'll, we'll see if you guys are, sure. are tuned in with me. Where is the worst place you can be for your kid to get sick as in throwing up peter piper no way i the, would say uh in the car that is correct yeah the uh. answer is in the car seat and that is what i dealt with last night what yep the 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 baby got sick and all over the car seat in the car it was a fabulous night <laughs> for me <laughs> combined with okay then the uh, baby waking up several times i got i got you slightly were beat you here. playing him the tape from the first half of the carolina colts game <laughs> that that is that is the where now what's the when as in what time of the day no as in when you're just entering a drive through line <laughs> And you're in line, <laughs> and they throw up in their car seat in the oh, back, and, you, and gotta... you go, what do I do? <laughs> and then you got to drive up to the window with your car smelling like vomit. And just, <laughs> you didn't do it, just, like, <laughs> just, just start ramming. Did you still <laughs> like order food? People before uh, ice cream. 
Yes. You still ordered <laughs> three, uh, three ice cream cones for the kids. Oh, my God. Because they needed to throw up That's more. That's Iron Gullet style. Well, that is uh, beautiful and horrible. No, just horrible. That was actually my wife's story. I stole it for her, but that is a true story. Wow. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening, guys. We'll be back tomorrow. Wheelofwater.com. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.